Ho ho hey everyone, Cynix here, and I'm finally back to finish part three of our Pattern Demon Design Lab. So it's been a while, but the winner that you guys selected was the design by Virtual Soldier, and you can see that on the right there. Uh, he had a very interesting design. I think it was most notable for having those weird tentacle snake-like appendage thingies coming out of its neck and enveloping the whole head and neck of the creature and maybe they're for camouflage, maybe they make it look more intimidating, I don't know what they're for, but they're really cool. Uh, so I thought that was a fun design, so I'm, I, I think we can do something good with it. Although it's a little too finished for me to come up with anything crazy, it's like he's already got a great finished design. Uh, but nonetheless, I guess that works because I am terrible at creatures. Hopefully this will be nice and straightforward. I can focus more on illustrative stuff. So anyway, diving right into it. You can see here, I'm using the semi-standard approach of first uh, designing a composition, just using a couple values, focusing on silhouettes. Just, you know, two or three values is all you need to really figure out a composition. And then after I have a composition, I'm just doing some line work. And you can see I didn't waste too much time on it. I don't need the line work to be super crisp. I'm just gonna paint over it anyway. I just need it to show me where everything is. And then of course I took it into Photoshop a little bit and was liquefying. You saw it jumping around a little bit, trying to just make the proportions work better. And uh, I also, you might've seen real fast. I, I thought about, I paused the video and I thought about adding a bunch of different textures. So I got a bunch of different textures of snakes. You can see them popping on and off right there. I'm like, oh, maybe I should do photo textures and photo bashing and that'll be, fun but i've already done that for a design lab so i thought you know after a little bit i'm like okay well, no nah, i'll just go back to painting that'll be more fun i can talk about all the exciting painting stuff instead of just using photo textures and this is not that exciting to be honest um so i don't actually use those photo textures so that was a little wasted effort uh, but that's fine we don't really mind um, so the main thing that I'm doing here is um, a lot of sculptural painting and I've realized that the more I've gotten into digital painting, the more I'm trying to approach it like a sculptor would. Um, so I found this great brush and don't worry, I will do a complete tutorial on this brush and how I use it and stuff in the coming month, let's say. Um, but I have this interesting brush uh, in Corel Painter that lets me kind of just blend things out really nicely. Uh, so it's good for making a hard edge line somewhere and then just blending out one side of it, which is really great for organic shapes because it lets you carve into them as if you were sculpting. So you can create hard, hard edge gradients and then smooth them out on one side and all that. Uh, so you can see there was a little transition there and that was because I was done with the first hour. We're already an hour in. I know it's zooming right along. Um, but I took a break. It's always important to take a break anytime you're trying to do a finished illustration. And uh, the first thing I noticed when I took the break, you know, I got my fresh eyes, I walked around, got a drink, and I noticed that the bottom of the piece got a little too cold. So I warmed it up, I brought a lot of these bright reds back into the bottom, and I think that makes it look a lot better. I don't want, to, I don't want things to look too cold. Um, so it's important to get a good balance of your colors. Obviously I got this very strong red head on this creature. So I need to bring some more warmer tones down into the bottom part. I think it looks better. It feels more lively. Uh, so you can see I'm playing around a lot with this stuff. I had this, this like fun tree trunk stuff. It's like he's standing on a little, little pile of stuff. Very, very like Frazetta-esque, you know, you got the, like the hero pose. He just needs a girl, like a scantily clad girl clinging to his leg or something. It's that classic hero pose, <laughs> except it's a weird little creature. Uh, so you can see, um, I'm just kind of playing around with this head a lot. And uh, I was trying to remember all the things I, I talk about when it comes to, you know, painting and stuff. So you can see I completely erased what I had. I thought, okay, I wasn't liking it, so I'll just do it again. Because usually if you just erase things and don't worry about it, it'll look better the second time. I know it's, you know, it's hard to just erase things and get rid of your hard work, uh, but you gotta believe that you're, you're gonna do something better and you usually will. Uh, so don't be afraid to just erase giant chunks of your art, even if you spent a long time doing line art and 
you know, trying to get it to look good. Just redo it. It'll, it'll look fine. Trust me. I just, I'm a professional when it comes to this. Uh, so you can see here, I left the face a little silly right here. It kind of looks like a Pokemon. What's that one? I, I, I'm going to nerd myself out in there, like a Porygon or something. I don't know. But that face is is quite silly. Uh, but I noticed in the in the drawing on the right, he had like this fake eye. I assume it's fake. Um, so I thought that would be just fun to test out real fast. So this is a little bit of a test. We're seeing how it looks. I'm trying to add some uh, little details, little birds. And there you can see another little transition, which means we're into hour three of painting. So I did one hour. I started the colors. I took a break came back to it, fixed some of the colors I didn't like, and now I took another break, and uh, walking back to it again, I saw a bunch more things I wanted to change. I wanted to add more details to this bottom stuff. I wanted to add more depth to like the legs, and just kind of mess with a bunch of these little things. And of course, I wanted to change the head completely. So, you know, it's, it's good. It's very good to just take a break from your work, take a step back. You can even take a day, because I think that's what I actually did. I actually slept on it, and then I woke up and stared at it from my bed, and I was like, oh, okay, I, I know what I can change. And uh, that's always a helpful way to do art. And don't just try to do it all in one sitting. So have multiple projects going if you want to be constantly drawing, because at least that way you can switch back and forth. Uh, but anyway, you can see I had those little birds in the background before, too. That's like a natural, fun thing to do. Uh, birds always just create a little more movement and life to the piece. I don't know. It's it's hard to resist just adding little smidges of birds and things. It just makes things feel more lively. As uh, so you can see here, I'm working a lot on this head. I feel like I had struggled with it the most. You can see I'm just constantly redoing it and trying to figure out how to make it look pretty. And uh, I, I'm kind of happy with the rendering, though. You can see if you look in closely... Uh, I have these really nice, I tried to bring in stronger saturated tones anywhere where it feels like the, the, the tentacle things or the snake things are folding into the other ones because there's a couple of them. So you bring in those saturated tones, you can see them where it like curves around and it's right next bumping up against the other one. And then on the outside edge, maybe where it's facing away from us, like the one in the background, uh, you can see I brought in a lot of desaturated tones, uh, like gray. It looks like it has a nice gray highlight along the edge. That's kind of like your bounced lights, little reflective stuff, and it makes it look a lot more fun, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the other thing about this design is I felt like it had that eye. I don't know if I like that eye, uh, but I felt like it needed more pattern stuff going on. Obviously, the the whole idea was pattern, so these things looked like snakes a little bit, so I thought I would give them a typical red snake looking pattern. I don't know, that's a common pattern, right? The black and white stripes. So now it looks very snake-like and uh, I guess it's okay. It, it kind of over details the head and leaves the rest a little bit plain if I want to be honest in critiquing it. Uh, but the last thing you can try, which is obviously very fun, is to add a lot of little speculars and this will make something look shiny. Um, so it's important, I've realized, I used to always go straight to like a highlight white, like pure white, uh, but this is actually like a bright pink color for the for the red part and a bright kind of yellowish green color for the tail. And that looks a lot better than going pure white. So anyway, that's going to do it for the design. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, once again, I'll talk more about that, that brush I'm using in the future because it's pretty fun. It's pretty hard to use though. Uh, but I hope you guys like this design. And uh, you know what? Actually, I think I could have bumped up the, the holiday factor on this one. After all, it's Christmas. Let's bump it up like 20 degrees. So there we go. Nice and holiday themed. And that's pretty fun. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys for watching. And of course, thanks to my wonderful patrons for making these videos possible. Love you guys.